Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about DC motor braking. We'll go over two basic braking methods for DC motors. Dynamic braking and regenerative braking. In dynamic braking, the motor's poles are short-circuited with the controller's power stage. Braking current starts to run in a closed circuit, and as a result of this, the motor brakes quickly. This image is meant to demonstrate the basics of dynamic braking. First, we're going to take a look at how current normally flows through the circuit. Power supply feeds current to the driver unit. The driver unit then directs the current into the motor according to its settings. The current then passes through the motor and continues to flow through the circuit. Now we start the braking. Notice the two switches inside of the driver unit. These direct the flow of current and now by changing them, the flow will also change. Switch 1 cuts off the feed from the power supply and switch 2 changes position to closed. These changes create a closed circuit between the motor and the driver unit. As a result of this, the motor works as a generator that supplies the now formed closed circuit with braking current. This generates the braking force needed to slow down the motor. The defect of this method is that the braking current can grow too great and therefore cause strain on the controller. The risk of this is increased when the object has a large mass and therefore high inertia. In this example, we're going to use dynamic braking to stop the motor. Notice the sound that the motor makes when it stops. Now, let's take a look at the oscilloscope image of what just happened. The blue line displays the motor current, and the yellow line displays the supply voltage. Each square in the oscilloscope measures 5 amps. You can see that the motor runs smoothly until the braking starts, and it seems to hit a brick wall. The current goes below zero and turns to braking current. The highlighted area displays the braking current spike. When comparing the current it takes to run the motor to the braking current it takes to stop the motor, you can see how much higher the needed braking current is than the running current. However, this does not affect the supply voltage. In regenerative braking, the motor's energy is being led back into the power supply. This is done by connecting the controller's power stage in a way that generates a so-called boost effect. Regenerative braking begins automatically in the pulse width modulation controlled full and half bridge power stage. When the rotational speed is greater than the speed that was set for the motor. This method typically activates when the motor is being slowed down or when an outside force starts to accelerate the motor. A good example is devices that are designed for lifting purposes. Here we have another image. This time to demonstrate regenerative braking. In a normal situation, the current flows through the circuit, just like in the previous image. 
However, in regenerative braking, the switches function differently compared to dynamic braking. Once again, the feed from the power supply is cut off when braking starts. At first, braking current starts to flow in a closed circuit, similarly to dynamic braking. However, in regenerative braking, the switches change position again, so that switch 1 directs the current into the power supply. The same process is repeated over and over again until the braking stops. Regenerative braking raises the supply voltage. Therefore, it's crucial to use a braking resistor simultaneously with the power supply. The resistor activates as the voltage increases. Without the braking resistor, there's a great risk that the power supply is damaged beyond repair. Electromen control units typically have an excess voltage limit that protects the power supply. However, it's worth noting that when this limit activates, the braking stops. Alternatively, you can use a battery that stores braking energy as your power supply. This is the ideal solution for situations that involve long braking sequences. Now we're going to take a look at regenerative braking. We're going to play the same situation again, but this time take a look at the bottom left corner with the power supply. Notice how the supply voltage spikes during braking. Once again the blue line is the motor current and the yellow one is the supply voltage. The oscilloscope image clearly displays how much regenerative braking affects the supply voltage. If regenerative braking isn't set up properly, it could cause damage to the devices if the supply voltage spike is high enough. Here's another oscilloscope image of regenerative braking. However, as you can see, the supply voltage doesn't rise as high as in the previous image. This is because of in this example we're using a braking resistor that limits the supply voltage spike. Those were the basics of DC motor braking. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.